Welcome to Let's in Power. Today's demo video will be about the cordless power drill. So we're going to split this video up into the basic parts of the power drill and also go through a basic breakdown of what the power drill does. Here we have outlined the seven breakdowns we're doing for the drill. So we'll talk about the battery, the chuck, the trigger, the switch, the selection collar, the light, and the speed controller. So let's talk about what the cordless power drill does. So you can use this drill for drilling holes into wood when you have a um, drill bit. You can also use it for when you are using a bit adapter to insert a screw and secure a screw into a piece of wood. Most likely you're securing two materials together. You can use a power, power drill for that. And you can also use this as a hammer drill, although unless you're a mason, you're not going to really use this setting. So the hammer setting provides a concussive force behind the power drill, and only masons use this when they're drilling into a really con really hard material such as concrete. So the hammer drill, which is what the power drill turns into when you put it on the hammer setting, is used by masons when they're drilling into concrete. So let's talk the battery. The battery is a removable rem the battery is a removable battery like most cordless power drills are. It has a black clip on the front that when you push down on that you're able to slide it out. And this battery on the back actually has an indicator to indicate the battery level um, of how much battery is left, how much juice is left in this battery before you have to recharge it. Of course, this battery is also rechargeable. Now let's talk about the chuck. So this chuck has a spinning grip chuck. What that means is when you spin the chuck in one direction, it opens to accept a bit adapter or a drill bit. And when you spin it in the opposite direction, it closes around it to tighten around it. And then you can spin it more and you'll hear clicks to and what those clicks mean is that it's being secured into place. In the lower left right hand corner we see a bit adapter so something like that can go into the chuck and it can be secured into the chuck so that a drill bit uh, so that a bit in this case a torx bit can torx screws can be used with this bit adapter. So what we have highlighted here is the trigger the trigger is once you pull it, you initiate the motors in the drill, and this is what causes the drill to go forward or backwards depending on what setting you have it on. The harder you push the trigger, the more the motor is going to work and the faster speed you're going to end up with. So if you're starting on working with this drill, just ease into it at first and it's going to be a lot easier for you. The next thing we're talking about is the switch, which is the little button-like device next to the trigger. And what this switch does is it switches the drill from forwards to backwards to in safety. So when the switch is pushed all the way to the right, this drill is in forward. And when it's pushed all the way to the left, the drill is in backwards. When it's balanced in the middle, the drill is locked. So what that means is even when you would push the trigger, nothing would happen. And this is the safest way to transport drills and such so they don't accidentally go off or accidentally hurt someone. The next thing we're going to talk about is the selection collar. So as I've talked about before, the hammer setting you can see is indicated in the middle picture and that's what masons use. So there's also a drill setting and a torque number setting. So when you're using a drill bit, you would use the drill setting. And if you were using a bit adapter, you could use a torque number. And of course, the, as the torque number increases, the number of torque you can generate also increases with the drill. Um, in this drill, it goes from 1 to 11. I see I have it selected on 9 in this picture. But this is all in the selection collar at the top of the drill. Um, the collar spins to change position, and whatever the arrow is pointing at is what it currently is on. The last thing we're going to talk about is the light. So this light is is seated at the base of the, the drill, and it also has three settings. So the farthest setting is dim, the middle set setting is half 
dim, half bright, and the farthest setting over is the brightest setting, but it does have a time warning on it because if you use something like that on the brightest setting, it's going to drain your battery real quick. And this light is very useful when you're doing anything with a drill because it gives you just extra light and extra visibility, and that's something you always want to observe when you're using power drills is that you have clear visibility and you know what you're doing with the drill and you're being careful with it. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the speed controller. So this one is on the top of the drill, and you can see there's a 1, 2, and a 3. So depending on what number you have it on is the fastest it can go. So 1 is the slowest, 3 is the fastest, and this allows you to have multiple settings with a power drill. And of course, 1 is going to generate the least amount of speed and three is going to generate the most amount of speed um so if you're beginning with these drills you're probably going to want to stay on speed one until you get more used to it and once you're past that you can move up speeds and get more comfortable with it what's cool about these drills is that when you spin this this opens further and when you spin it the other way it closes so that mechanism is how this drill locks drill bits into place, and I'll show you what I mean. So what you see here is a drill bit with a round end. So when you put this in here, you want it to go all the way back in the drill, and then you spin this. So when it gets tight around it, then you're going to spin it more till you hear a click, and then once you hear the click, spin it one more time till you hear a, a few more clicks, and this locks it into place. So now when I spin this, it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay in there nice and straight, which is going to provide us a straight hole when we try to drill into some wood. So let's demo it. Here we have some pieces of wood. So we're going to drill one hole into these. So some tips for this is one, always remember your safety concerns. So always be careful that you're not putting your finger on this when you're drilling. Don't try and mess around with it. If you have long hair, put your hair back so no hair gets caught in this. Um, just be sure to be safe with it and use common sense because you don't want to end up getting hurt while using a drill. So the first thing that you should remember when you're using this drill is you want to be putting force on the back when you have this down and you want this at a perpendicular angle if you're trying to drill a straight hole. So when you have this at a perpendicular angle, most of the time this means you're standing to be able to drill this. So let me show you. We're going to drill a hole into this first piece of wood. So I'm going to find a spot on it, put my drill above it, and I'm going to put pressure on the back. And I'm going to start the hole, and then once it starts going, I'm going to hold this to make sure it doesn't spin around on me, because if you let it spin, you're going to get hurt. You want this in place. Most of the time, you should be using a clamp to hold this on the table so that there's no chance of it spinning. Then drill down. <laughs> So now it's been through the first hole. It's been through the first piece of wood and you can see we have a hole. So a tip is once you have this hole, you can clean out this hole very simply. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold this pe the piece of wood or whatever you're drilling into and you're going to slowly ease the bit in and out. This cleans the hole so you have a nice clean hole that you can put something into. A lot of people like to do this just so that they have, end up with a clean hole and so you don't have to worry about debris and stuff in there in the first place. So now I have this hole drilled so what can I do with this hole? Well we can take this bit out of this drill and we can put in an, a bit adapter with a I have a torque tip in here. We can lock this up. And now I have a torque screw. So what I can do to connect these two pieces is use this hole as a as a hole to allow the screw to go through first and then into the second piece. What this allows is a really tight fit between these two pieces because what happens is the screw the 
screw isn't biting into the first piece, it's only biting into the second piece. So this allows the top of the screw and this piece to come together to force the middle piece of the wood and the, and the other piece of the wood close together next to each other. So let me show you. You put this in your borehole, take a torque setting, and then you're going to line it up. Once again, you're going to want to be above it and perpendicular, start drilling. So we can see now that I'm drilling into it, they're still loose. But you can see that this first piece of wood is what is spinning around. So the further we drill this in, the tighter and tighter this piece of wood and this piece of wood are going to come together. Alrighty, and there you have it. These piece of wood and this piece of wood are not coming apart. That's pretty deeply drilled in there. I didn't even have to drill it that far, but these are bound together and they're not coming apart. Thank you for watching today's video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below or contact us at let's.empower1357 at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe.